All right, welcome to the new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dreams Show. I'm your host, Manuja Garwal, and today we'll be talking to Steve Sims, who officially becomes the most uh, frequent guest on this podcast now. Uh, so uh, if you haven't known of or heard of Steve, so he's the CEO of Bluefish, which is a luxury concierge service uh, that provides once in a lifetime experience for its ultra exclusive clientele. Uh, so Steve has worked with some of the mo world's most influential people, including Sir Richard Branson, Elton John, Elon Musk, and many more. Uh, real life Wizard of Oz, that's what people call him. Uh, he has left a mark with his best-selling book, Blue Fishing, The Art of Making Things Happen, and awe-inspiring speeches at Fortune 500 companies, the Pentagon, and Harvard twice. Um, he has done stupidly unimaginable things like sending people to the Titanic and uh, getting people married by the Pope and organizing a private dinner of uh, six at the feet of Michelangelo's David while being serenaded by Andrea Bocelli. He has been featured in over 30 TV shows, over 60 major publications. Steve founded Bluefish in 1996 and in 2003, Bluefish partnered with MBNA to launch its own credit card. In 2004, Bluefish was named the official concierge of LA and New York Fashion Week. And Bluefish Concierge was the official concierge for the Kentucky Derby from 2005 to 2007. So this is just a very small list of the things that Steve has done. So welcome, Steve. So excited to have you. I hate bios. Thank you yeah. so much. But I, you have to sit here and you have to hear those kind of stuff. And that's, that, that's in the past. I always think is what you do in the future that's more important. That's true. That's true. Well, I mean, it's always a good way to tell people who you are, because the, the first time I talked to you, uh, you know, looking at you, it's 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 very difficult to, you know, like imagine that you would have done these things. So, so it's, it's, it's always good to tell people what uh, what you're all about. So uh, absolutely. You know, it's it's uh, it's good to talk about the future. But uh, let's uh, let's. Talk about the present first. So you just recently released a new book called uh, Go, with, uh, Go for Stupid. And uh, your, your previous book, Blue Fishing, was a huge success. So can you tell us uh, what is what is the essence of um, these two books, especially Go for Stupid? Yeah, so you mentioned my past. My past was that I ended up becoming this Mr fixer uh, this go-getter for the, the the rich and predominantly unfamous i would only say that 10 percent of my the rest of them own things like countries um but uh hugely wealthy hugely powerful blue because i had been offered a book deal and i thought yeah it is. and i didn't take it seriously and the beautiful thing is when you don't take things seriously, you get to have fun with things and you do it the way you want to do it. You play the game you want to play. You write the rules. So I did that with Blue Fishing and I thought no one's going to touch it with a barge pole. It's too poor. It's too basic. You know, everybody already knows this shit. Mm. And I was stunned. Mm. I was stunned that people don't stick to the basics. Yeah. And... Then I started teaching, training, coaching, speaking all over the planet. And I'm thinking, this is crazy. Why am I in this crap? And there's, I, I'm talking to generals. I'm talking to CEOs. I'm talking to entrepreneurs, gurus of the world, influence, impact leaders. And they're like, oh, I ignored that. Oh, I, I, I went past. I overlooked that. So this law into one career, and I openly said, I'm never writing another book. That was fun, but I don't want to do it again. Um, and then this thing called COVID came across. And I was very aggravated. We were at a time where all of humanity should have connected with each other. With each people. What did we start doing? We started canceling each other. Mm -hmm. And we started going into the gotcha society. And if I can find out something you said 23 years ago, Put it up on Instagram. I'm going to do And I got really angry about it. And I noticed that the problem wasn't with us today because mm -hmm. we've always been that bad. We've always been that horrible. We've always 
been noisy and poor, stupid people, noisiest of the planet. They have an opinion without having a bank balance. And, and that's the dumb thing that I found today. The danger with today is that we got media far stronger and faster. If someone does something in Korea, we know about it two seconds. Okay. But today we're getting a lot of people with nothing else to do in their life than pick up their phone, throw hatred, throw fake news, and to go on a, on a rant to try and destroy people's careers without actually deciding to do anything for themselves. So Go For Stupid was trying to get people it's the way they communicated, changed each other. I want to support people. I want to help people grow. If I don't know what to do to help you, I'll make the coffee while we find someone that does. I don't want to, I don't think that's right. But today, we do it like it's a bloody Olympic sport. Mm -hmm. So um, you brought up a very good point. Like a lot of people... Um, they judge other people or they, you know, uh, they, they get into cancel culture while not having done anything themselves. So is it primarily coming from people who don't understand the effort it takes to even get something done? Like, is, is, is that is that sort of the common theme um, that you have seen in your uh, experience? Yeah, basically, 85 percent of the planet worked for that 15 percent. Mm -hmm. But that 85 percent is really bloody noisy. And mm. the amount of times that, you know, we, we, as you say, judge a book by the cover, cover, you judged me, you know, before we'd really got to know each other. Fine by that, mm. because I don't want to be loved by everyone. I mm. absolutely do not. So I, I continue my, my voice. I, I guarantee you in the, in, in the, the few minutes we've had this podcast, there's probably people. And try and cancel me. Knock yourself out. Enjoy it. I don't understand why that's someone's direction. So mm -hmm. I think today there's a lot of ignorance. I think today there's all you see, it's easier for me to sit down and go, Manoush, you're an idiot. You're an immigrant. Why should I listen to you? You gotta go back to where you came from. I can say all of those things because it's easier. Than actually trying to become, and I think that's what people like to do today. Mm -hmm. They like to hide behind the euphoria of hatred rather than step in front of it and actually become the solution they want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, it, it's a way to get their validation. I guess in a way um, for for whatever lack they are experiencing in their life. But moving beyond that, you know, again, um, even in your uh, first book, uh, which was a hugely impactful on me and many, many other people. Um, and and uh, you talk about a lot of these experiences that you've had, which most people say it's not even, po it's not even possible to book an entire uh, museum at the feet of David, which is one of the most, uh, you know, like well-known sculptures or pieces of art. How did you? How did? How does your mind even work to conceive of that idea and say, "Oh, maybe I should try that." Like, what is that process like in your mind when you think of something, you know, that that nobody has done, and and say, "Hey, let's try to do that." Well, the latter part of your statement there started to make the request to intimidate you, mm. but let's. Let's change. If I said to you, hey, Manoj, we've known each other for years. If I said to you, hey, Manoj, I saw what you were trying to do and it looks impossible, but hey, let's do it. Let, let's attack it. Let's, let's, let's make the impossible possible. Looking like that, you actually start getting very uh, feisty. Mm. And you start getting very tense, very violent and forceful. And all of those things are not there to assist creation. Mm -hmm. But if I said to you, hey, Manoj, I saw you trying to do that thing. Let's make it stupid. Let's go for a ridiculous goal. What's the stupidest 
possibly dream of the journey. And let's go for that. Now, mm. when I start talking to you like that, mm. you start smiling. Your childlike neurons. And I'm sure there's a doctor out there that can go, well, actually, you just activated this mm. bit of your brain. But the start to game a fun have fun with it. your body changes and you become an inquisitive five year old now mm. an a five year old a four year old a three year old they don't recognize impossible they don't see it so for them they vision play as you've got today if you visioned, dreamed, and played. So I've worked with some amazing people, and I've noticed that every time there's a problem, rather than trying to bash through the wall of whether or not it can be achieved, they... Is there a problem? Let's dress it up in pink and do something about it. You know, it was always that kind of thing. There's, there's famous movies of Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was working out, and one of the tactics he used to use was he used to dress up to get himself out of his body and head space. I'm not lifting this anymore. Superhero me is. And mm. he would gamify himself. And there's footage of him actually doing that. And that's because he knew the power of that child creativity in order to get where you wanted to be yeah no i mean again this is exactly uh, the kind of mindset that a lot of people don't have and they get when they come into your world or they read your book they they get that and i got it you know I, it was a, like a light bulb that went in my mind but the the key is that what you do is like you actually not even think about yourself but you also think about the the person you are doing it for and you know and you then say hey what will what will make them a, a child and that is a, another layer of uh, complexity right like one can say hey i i have this dream uh, you know maybe it's stupid but i'll go for it but it's another thing thing to say hey let me talk to you and see what will your childlike dream be like so um so maybe shed some light on that like how do you read that in other person and then say, okay, you know, this is exactly what you need at this moment. The sad thing yeah, we want, well, I'm not pick on you for, for this kind of example, but you could speak to your best mate and go, hey, if you had a billion dollars, what would you want to do today? And they will give you a response that's either comical or funny or flattering or or exactly is they won't actually tell you what their core dream is. They'll go, oh, I want to I wanna buy my school a new football pitch, or I want to get out on John to come over to my bar barbecue tonight. But in six months' time, what's really important to them is forming a charity, sorting their mom's house, painting their neighbor's front yard you know, a house because they can't afford to do it. Stuff that's not very exciting, but it's important to them. And today we're actually embarrassed about it. Nobody looks at each other in the eye and says, hey, if you could do anything tomorrow, what would it be? Yeah, yeah. Garden and do this. And then why? They don't do it. So they're actually scared. So when people come to me, they may want to sing with Elton. They may want to perform with that favorite rock star. They may want to close down a museum. But they're too restricted in today's world that they They've already put seeing you hear someone say, I'd like to do that, but ah, it's impossible. Who do I know? Why would they? Ever? They will tell you what they want in one second, but then spend the next five minutes telling you why it's not possible. We mm. talk ourselves out. I believe we're an army, you know, and, and Manoj, you're a perfect example. I knew you from being a very quiet character into the to the AI lecturer university leading powerhouse that you are now. I knew you beforehand. 
right? Mm. And something clicked on that you where you went, hang on a minute, I can. And yeah. Jay Abraham always had an IQ. But if you can actually look at yourself and get yourself, I mean, and I will pick on you for this example, but pre me, do you remember when you used to walk into a room and suddenly think to yourself, I'm the dumbest person in here. I'm yeah. the least successful person in here. I'm the poorest per person in here. I'm the person in here. We, we actually limit ourselves, don't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I remember, I remember also being in some rooms going, oh, these guys are all really successful, only to find out they were just as messed up as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not until you suddenly start looking at it, and it's almost like the Matrix. You know, you take the blue pill or the red pill. I don't know which one it is. But you suddenly see through it, and you go, hang on a minute. I deserve one conversation that everybody needs to have is with themselves. Mm. Now, walk into that room, it's not us that says that we're not good enough. It's that little devil on our shoulder. Mm -hmm. That the whispers in our ear and goes, Manoush, don't say anything. You'll sound stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we tell ourselves that we put a picture up on Instagram and then we go, Oh, but I look fat in there. Oh, I did. You know, my hair wasn't right. Oh my God. My, I've got a funny voice. You know, I don't sound good. All of you have a conversation with yourself and go, right, everyone. We are going to achieve this. We are going to do this. Yeah. And then you achieve it. You suddenly don't get the doubt. I literally feel as though there's nothing in the planet I couldn't achieve. Yeah. Nothing. And there's a lot of you out there going, well, that's arrogant. Gives a fuck. I can do anything that I put my mind to it while you're sitting at home in your armchair moaning that you haven't even tried. That's the main thing. Try, fail. Become educated, do it again, become experienced, repeat it, and it will that's yeah. the that's the stepping stones. Yeah, yeah. And people don't yeah. realize that. Yeah. I think that's that's so deep and that's so profound. And I remember the first conversation I had with you is is it was along the same lines. And uh, and I asked you like wh why why is it that you are able to do it? And I think your answer was because you said you are you were stupid like you were you did not care what other people thought of you and i think uh, it comes back to our initial conversation about cancel culture and all that that we are scared of what people are going to think about us and that's why we don't um, make the first uh, effort or f take the first step so how do you how do you like you know, take, for example, for me, like I used to be like that, you know, very, very aware of what people used to think about me and I don't anymore. So how do you, how do you um, develop that mindset that says, Hey, you know, whoever you are, you are all, you belong here because you have something of substance. Everybody has something of every cloud has a silver lining. So, so how do you develop that mindset or did you have it naturally or when you work with other people and help them develop a mindset like what do you do with that there's quite a lot there in that question so let's try and unpack it um your mind is a muscle mm -hmm. and that muscle needs to be, to be able to lift heavier run faster endure more you need to exercise it mm -hmm. so you need to exercise your mind reading books, watching documentaries, listening to podcasts, all of those things are exercise in your mind, okay? And then what you need to do, I'll give you an example. Have you ever gone to, I don't know, a garage, you know, a parking lot or a car dealership, mm -hmm. and you're walking through the dealership and you see a car and it's a, it's, you know, pastel yellow or it's, yeah, the, the, whatever it is, it's a strange color. Mm -hmm. And you think, that is a weird-ass color. I haven't seen that color before. Ed. When you're driving home, what's the only color you can see on the road? The yellow color. 
it's that yellow color. I remember when I came over to here to California, I wanted to buy a truck and um, I went down to the dealership and they had the truck that I wanted with everything I wanted on it, but it was white. And I thought to myself, a white truck? Do I really want that? Who has a white truck? Then I drove down the road and everyone had a white truck. Okay. <laughs> It's open to seeing things. It's the only thing it can see. Mm. If it's trained to recognize negativity mm. and pain and distress, what's it going to see? Mm. But if you can train your mind to different people's ideas, different people's values, different people's techniques, tactics, Hacks, vision. If you suddenly start seeing that I, what's the, the only thing you're going to see tomorrow? Opportunity. So you've got to exercise it. Listen to different music you've never listened to. Watch by, listen to, read all books, listen to audio books, whatever. But realize your brain acts on what the eyes can see. Mm. So if you can teach it to see opportunity, positivity, I'll give you another example. There's a great man. Uh, um, he died. The gentleman's name is Dr. Sean Stevenson. Mm -hmm. And Sean always used to say, no matter what happened to him, and this is a guy on a wheelchair, not in, he was always particular to say that, on a wheelchair, and if he coughed badly, physically would break a rib. Okay, oh, that's yeah. how bad things were. His body, he should have died, according to the doctor. Because he passed away, I think it was three years ago now. Mm. And anything that ever happened to him, no matter how horrible, poor fella had some shit going on. Anything that ever happened to him, he would turn around and say, hey, I always ask myself, has this done to me? Or was it done for? Mm. And the second you actually look at framing it, you know, I just, I just lost that relationship. Well, is that a good thing or is that a bad? Thing? Well, well, you patient on what you did wrong. I've lost, I've lost deals. I've got sued. I've lost money. I've lost relationships. And all of those things have educated me to not replicate those again. That's, so I think people aren't aware that just like your body, your mind is a muscle and mm. it will react to what you feed it. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's great. Uh, so, so exercising that muscle takes, takes time, takes effort and, it also takes um, some, yeah, thick skin to ignore people's, um, you know, uh, people laughing at you or, or criticizing you or what have you. So um, now, you know, you also have a way to get people's attention. Like, you know, you, you have built a, such a, a good brand for yourself. Um, you have a media company and you uh, also look at, uh, you know, unique ways of, as you said, people, how they think and, and incorporate all that into branding, into marketing, into tangible things on getting attention. You're really, really, really good at getting people's attention. So can you share with us any, um, any like tips or tricks that you use to get people's attention when it is important? For example, uh, you, one of the things that you do is take people to prison and, you know, it's, it's for a great cause, but the way that you, Present it as, hey, I'm going to prison, and everybody's like, "What happened? You know, like, what? <laughs> where did you break into, or something like that?" But it's a great way that you that you uh, take something, and then you present it in a way that grabs people's attention. So, what is your secret there? Um, clarity and brevity. You see, we're we're in a really noisy world today, mm -hmm. and in that noisy world. You can't gain attention by being noisier because you'll mm. get tired real, real quick. 
Mm. And a, a lovely woman that I love, Sally Hogshead. She always is better than better. Oh, one's over going to do this for the advertising. Do this over here with clarity. When I work as a uh, as a client, the first thing I do is I get them naked. And not literally, but in that digital state. And that's where people go wrong. So for argument's sake, you want to start a car dealership tomorrow, or you want to become a dentist, or you want to become a gardener, or you want to be become an, an AJ. The first thing you do is look at all of your competition and then replicate it. Every car dealership ends up looking like every other car dealership. Every dentist looks like every dentist. Every plumber looks like every plumber. But we're all individual until that time we become cop. Gone, hey, well, I'm ugly, I'm loud. These are all unique things to me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be it. So I'm always very clear. Like we said about the prison, I will literally just put down on Facebook, if you can't get hold of me tomorrow, it's because I'm in prison. <laughs> and I lots of people coming to me, you need me to look after the family. I had some haters going, I knew it. I knew all along <laughs> you were a star. I, I had no doubt whatsoever. Um, <laughs> and it just makes me laugh. It really does make me giggle because the downside is, you to attention to those that matter. If I if I say something on I don't know Insta Jam tomorrow, and I get a lot of hatred, okay, and sometimes it happens. Um, I, I won't care. I won't care. But if I get Manoj go, uh, Steve, this this sound or okay, but it's sounding you know, violent, vicious, racist, whatever, then I'm going to go, really? You you got that out of that? And I'll listen to you. You see, the point is too many people spend too much time listening to people that don't matter. When you mm. know people that matter to you, then pay attention. If Jay texts me and go, Steve, your marketing sucks, I'm going to listen to Jay. But if some guy flipping me burgers at the drive-thru at McDonald's tonight says, oh, your marketing sucks, maybe mm. I'm not going to listen to that guru. So, yeah, yeah. you know, don't always try to listen to everyone else. You say about thick skin, I'm quite a sensitive guy. Uh, I may not come across like it, but I listen to those that matter. And the deciding factor is to control what matters in your life and what is just not. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a that's a big distinction because a lot of people cannot make that uh, difference. They cannot understand that difference. Um, now, uh, you talk a lot about mistakes, and you know, uh, you you say um, mistakes are basically our friends, where you get to learn what works, what doesn't work. What are yep. some of the mistakes that you have made in your life that that uh, oh, uh, made? Yeah. Yeah. Today or over the last ten years. Um... Well, the ones that you want to share. Yeah, there's been so many. Um, I did a deal with a, a car company called Ferrari. And I have always, throughout my life, since a kid, worn black T-shirts and ridden around on motorbikes. Mm -hmm. Forever. And then I got this deal and I thought, shit. And actually some, someone at an event said, oh, and I went, yeah, 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 I'm doing this in Monaco with Ferrari and the Sultan of Brunei and loads of Hollywood people and richest people in the planet. And I went, what do you mean am I going like, are you going to dress up like that and go to that party? Now, here's the thing. I already had the deal. It was my event. Yet I was now listening to a guy that wasn't even invited. <laughs> And what did I do? I listened to. I went out and I bought a bloody great big watch and I bought a tailor-made suit and I bought my first ever vintage Ferrari. Mm -hmm. And all of it 
And I came back from the event and I realized I had sold out. I had turned up an event to have been at, you know, or I should have been at as me. Mm -hmm. It taught me very early to be valuable. You're way too much of an asset to sell yourself out on someone else's noise. So literally, I came back, I sold the car, got rid of the suits, never wore them again, sold the watch, um, never wore it, and I went back to being the kid on the black T-shirt and on a motorbike. Never replace what makes you. And I've learned so many lessons about who I pay attention to, where I pay enthusiasm to, where I focus my energy on. And I'm a great believer on your ROE. Now, everyone knows ROI is return on investment. I focus on an ROE, return on effort. Into this. Am I happy? Am I rejuvenated? Am I successful? Am I well? What do I get? What is my feedback? rather than my ROI. ROI is just one metrics. You put 10 bucks in, you make 12. That's 20%. That's your ROI. But an ROE, so many different than that. So you've... I, I make mistakes. Uh, literally made one this morning on a contract I sent out. Luckily caught it, and it was overseas, so they hadn't read it in time. And I was able to go, hey, in case you saw that, I'm voiding that because I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. This was the paragraph that that mistake was in, and that paragraph for this paragraph. Mm -hmm. Let me know, and I'll wake up in the morning and find out if they confirm. But I noticed it this morning, so constantly making mistakes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, great. And one thing uh, also, you know, um, I want to talk to you about uh, mentors because I know you have a lot of uh, great mentors and you mentor other people, you, you've mentored me and many other people. So what are, what are uh, some of the uh, things that you have learned from your mentors? Like what is the importance of coaches and mentors in your life? Well, the first importance is you've got to get one. Um, and the funny thing is I literally have just taken on three. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a weird thing because if you're building a house, you need someone to construct the walls. You need someone to paint the walls. You need someone to put the ceiling on the walls. You need to plug the floor in. And it's never the same person. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, you need someone to oversee this construction to make sure it's actually going in the same path. You don't want a roof built that's massive to a small house, you know? June with it so you need someone to oversee that construction you are the house now like all entrepreneurs we think we can do everything ourselves okay <coughs> and a lot of the time we can but we can do way more and that was the first thing i noticed when i've got people around me my mentors ari mizel joe polish uh jason gaynard uh um uh, J.A. Uh, uh, Qasem Aslam. All of these people, I surround myself with really for people. Hey, recently, I've just taken on three more mentors uh, that you'll be hearing about later on. I took on, uh, I, I've been with Roland and Ryan for a while, uh, and now I've just taken on J, um, uh, Damon John. So mm. I'm constantly trying to push myself by surrounding myself with people who have are therefore more educated than me and therefore greatest visionaries than me. So I want to not stop growing. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I have to surround myself with push me and challenge me to become uncomfortable and grow. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I think um, that's that's another thing I've learned from you is like never stop growing because if you're not growing, you're basically dead. Dying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that's great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Steve, for another uh, uh, fun, entertaining conversation. Uh, now, can you tell us if people want to get in touch with you, how can they connect with you? How can they buy your books? Uh, what is the easiest way to get to you? 
Steve D. Sims. There's one M in Sims and D for dashing in the middle there. So Steve D. Sims. Dot com. You can find out about the book and everything else I'm up to, speakeasies, training, coaching, media, whatever. Or Steve D. Sims, any way you consume your media, LinkedIn, Instagram, any way you like, throw in Steve D. Sims and I'll pop up. Awesome. Great. We'll put those links in the show notes. Thank you so much. Cheers, pal. Thank you. Thank you.